Hey, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, online virtual book launch of the book Soul Journey of Human Beings. This is Nitin Soni and I welcome you all. Give me a quick confirmation in the chat box that you all can see me, that you can hear me. Please type yes in the chat box if you can see me, if you can hear me. Type in yes in the chat box. I can already see a lot of people have joined us this evening. This is Nitin Soni and I welcome every single one of you to this amazing online discussion come virtual book launch event of the book that I have in my hand right now. So give me a quick confirmation by typing yes so I know that we are connected. You can see me and you are as excited as I am right now to, to get into this deep, interesting, fascinating, knowledge-filled discussion with none other than the author of the book, Mr. Sunil Shetty. Type in yes in the chat box. Great. So thank you so much, Ratna, Sandeep, Sonal, Amita, Sri Lekha, Ulas, Sandeep, Vinu, Uday, and all of you. Thank you very much for giving me that confirmation. I really give you a very warm welcome. I'm so glad and happy that you're here this evening. And I absolutely promise that by the end of this session, you'll have some amazing key insights and takeaways that you're going to cherish for the rest of your life, right? So, so what is this all about? What is this discussion all about? And who is my very special guest, guest for this evening? Well, the guest is the author of the book, Soul Journey of Human Being. And if you can see that, it's very, you know, very uh, specifically written. It's being, right? So there you go. So I want to introduce you to the to the author himself. But before I do so, I want to welcome him. So Mr. Sunil Shetty, please join us as we go ahead now in this discussion. Friends, please join me in welcoming none other than the author himself. So very warm welcome to you and a happy good evening. Hi, all of you. Thanks for joining. And uh, thanks, uh, Nitin, for uh, having such a wonderful uh, event, actually. And Thank you. So, so Mr. Mr. Sunil Shetty, I want to quickly tell my audience something about you. So everybody who has joined us right now, Mr. Sunil is the author of the book that is there in my hand right now. This is a virtual book launch event. Now, this man has, you know, he's been doing meditation for the last 25 years. He has gained knowledge on Indian and Chinese healing and meditation methods. And that's exactly what we'll be discussing today. He has mastery over energy measurement, soul, chakras, human consciousness, and self-healing. So what we're going to be covering here today are concepts, ideas, knowledge that's going to just blow your mind. So Mr. Sunil, once again, very warm welcome. And I'm looking forward to, to this discussion, sir. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Sunil, if you could tell us something about your journey, about your life, about you, tell the audience, like, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, your background and, uh, and how did you, uh, you know, got introduced to this, uh, this concept and eventually this, this book, how did, how has been your journey? Tell us something about you, please. Yeah. I mean, my almost 35 years of my corporate life, uh, my, you know, entire journey of my career, 25 years, I was in a corporate like Siemens and, uh, Victor. And uh, as such, my spiritual journey started 25 years back. And last 10 years, I'm in a dedicated path of uh, spirituality. And I'm doing the meditations and, uh, you know, healing and blessing kind of things, actually. And, uh, I mean, that that is what is basically, you know, triggered the, uh, you know, coming out with a book. And uh, I'm basically coming out with my website also. I'm launching my website today and offering a lot of services to humanities. And those services are available on my website, actually. So as such, my spiritual journey started 25 years back uh, when my father gave me uh, a mantra, Gayatri Mantra. And I think I started from my previous life there itself. And then slowly, slowly, I was doing that and gaining the kind of uh, spirituality. Even though I was in a corporate life, I used to do a very stringent kind of meditations, at least one hour per day. Even I, whenever I used to catch the flight, I used to finish my meditation before that. So uh, that's how, you know, put me onto a kind of spiritual path. And then this is how I have basically, you know, traveled this path. Which is interesting. Well, I have a lot of questions for you. Uh, I have a list full of questions, but I want to tell every single one of you who is joining us right now. Friends, all of you. If you have any questions that you that you want to ask the special guest today, if they, if you have any questions that you would like to ask the author himself, please do not hesitate to put your questions in the chat box. So we have a chat box and we are having a keen eye on the chat box. In case you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box. 
I'll take your questions. I'll become your voice and I'll ask those questions to the guests today. Okay. And before we really move ahead, I really want to, I really want every single one of you to congratulate the author because today we are celebrating the virtual book launch of the book that he has written. So I would really like every single one of you to please type congratulations Sunil or congrats Sunil in the chat box because I want to see that energy in the chat box. Uh, you know, that, that congratulation messages. This, this is the moment and this is the day. So please go ahead and type that in the chat box while I ask my next, next question to you. So, so Sunil, very uh, warm, uh, you know, I'm really glad and congratulations to you for your achievement. You said that whenever you used to get time, even if you're traveling, you would meditate, right? So you just said you would meditate. My simple straight question to you, what is meditation and what do you do in it, sir? What is, what is your understanding of the meditation? I will ask the people who are in the you know, chat box. What, is, what do you mean by the meditation? I mean, I mean, I have explained in detail in this book what is the meditation, but then just to you know, ask the people what is the meditation. So what is your, uh, Nitin, your understanding about the meditation? Sure, I'll tell you, sir. So I would also like to ask, if, and by the way, a lot of congratulations messages flowing in, Mr. Sunil, Sonal and Sanjay and Advait and Amita, Sandeep, uh, you know, Atharva and every single one of them congratulating you for your achievement thanks, today. Thanks, Patrick. <laughs> this is a great moment now now straight away friends we are engaging into a conversation now now the straight away the question that has come up is what do what, what is it that we understand by this word called meditation well let me tell you what i understand with meditation and what, meditation is like uh, sitting in silence with yourself and you uh, you know you cut off from the rest of the world and you uh, probably focus on either one thing or you focus on nothing that is what maybe what I understand. And just to add to what I said, some of the uh, people who have joined us, they are saying being with oneself is what meditation is. Another one says one with oneself and being able to focus for peace or maybe calming down of your mental state is what meditation. So these are the answers that are flowing in. Are we close? Are we close yeah. to the real meaning? <laughs> no, actually, why I'm basically, uh, you know, talking about the meditation now, because, uh, you know, the meditation means you define some kind of framework Gee. that I'm going to do, whether, whether I'm going to do chanting, I'm going to do uh, listen to music, that is also meditation. So I'm going to, you know, do certain kind of activities and I will basically, you know, focus on those activities. Okay, that is basically the instruction will be given to the mind. So this meditation defines the framework of your, uh, you know, what you are going to do. But here I wanted to, you know, tell you very clearly, what are you doing when you are, this meditation, what you are doing is a control way, right? You are defining. But what is your mind doing? So our mind is doing a meditation every second. So every thought process is doing a meditation. That is uncontrolled way. 90% your mind is doing a meditation, uncontrolled way. So you understand those things very clearly first. For example, I'm sitting on the chair and I'm thinking about some past event. You are uncontrolled way doing a meditation. I'm thinking about the relationship with my bosses, relatives or you know, whatever. I mean, I have hurt I mean, you know, on those one. So I'm doing that. That is what your mind is doing, the uncontrolled way of meditation. So what exactly happens is basically, I mean, we will we'll, we'll run through the, you know, the entire consciousness processes and all that and how it is. But you are doing a meditation every second. That is uncontrolled way. You try to shift the, you no, know, your meditation methods on the control way. Now your mind, what exactly mind happens is you define the framework. Mind is a governor. Mind try to run hundreds of activities, you know, in a background. Those activities are also basically defined by you or lingering in the mind. The moment you push your meditation requirement into the, you know, the mind, what happens is mind take those as the input and then, you know, mind start basically taking the priority of other items and mind drift. So the meditation is basically unknowingly you are doing. So you basically try to shut those particular vibrations which are in your mind and trying to calm your mind so your mind basically come on to a kind of maybe one thought or you know those thoughts were in your mind which are 
which are disturbing you, that frequency will come down. Now, that is what is one type of meditation. What I'm trying to tell you, the same thing, you know, that meditations on a different level. For example, I have defined a four, uh, you know, stage of the human being where the meditations done in a different, different way. For example, on the certain places where meditations is done on the, like listening to music, some people, they don't know chanting and all that. So they, they basically do a breathing. The breathing is also meditation. You involve into your good activity. You like something, right? I like to play. I like to cook. I like to do this, which is my, you know, a hobby. So you involve into that. You try to do the same kind of meditation, control way meditations, where you engage your mind and you, you reduce your, you know, another unwanted thing. So this is one meditation, right? But then if you move on to the, you know, the, the higher and higher advancement path, the meditations are totally different. Those are basically your chakra base, your, uh, you know, breathing base, your uh, energy level base. And those meditations are basically untying all your, uh, you know, uh, the blockages and your transformation starts. So if you are undergoing a kind of certain meditations, you have to really look into a kind of hidden dangers of meditations. That is very clear. That is very, very important. For example, if I start doing a heavy breathing and, uh, you know, some kind of exercise which is related to my, uh, you know, eyebrow chakra, what happens is you are, those kind of consciousnesses will try to untie and your testing will start. So you should be ready for the testing. So, you no, know, you read my book carefully and as you rightly said, you know, each and every paragraph you read it. Maybe you may not understand at that time. You may understand after some time. And at that time, you will realize that if I do this particular thing, am I ready for this? I'm not talking about the simple meditations where I'm basically relaxing with the music, relaxing with the child, you know, chanting. I'm very clearly defining those meditations in a different, different level. Right. So... So basically you're saying is what you're saying is there are different, different ways of meditation. Let's say, for example, uh, somebody who is very deeply passionate about art or maybe drawing or maybe painting is again doing a form of meditation. But when we talk about higher levels of meditation, that is done through a different way altogether. And, and, and that is when you are keen to get into higher states of your consciousness. Is that what, you're, what we are saying, sir? Correct. And that unfoldment is basically, see, what happened is when you are doing these higher meditations, your consciousness are basically moves into the advanced stage. And this advanced stage is basically, you know, unfolding all those uh, blockages and you need to transform those. So those things are very, very, you know, uh, what I can say are uh, in front of you suddenly. If you try to do a kind of meditation which is not required for your present state. So are we saying that when we choose to do meditation, should it be under some guided, uh, you know, it has to be somebody who is guiding you as to what sort of meditation is right for you at this point in time of your current state? Is that what we, what we are saying, sir? Correct. So what I actually, you know, uh, I have defined the four uh, stages of human being, means it's evolution, I mean, and it's evolvement. What happened is the two stages being one and being two and being three and being four. So these two stages are basically, you know, engaged into your material life, your, you know, your physical life. And the third and fourth is more towards on the, on the spiritual side and more towards on, you know, you know, away from the material life. So when you are doing these things, you have to be ready and you should understand your present status. For example, there are so many people who run here, there and try to do something. Oh, there are some yoga exercises are there. There are basically, you know. Uh, different, different, everything is available until you join some group and hey, somebody is doing something. So let's try. What will happen is, it, it is basically you are going to open up your uh, some kind of energy centers or some kind of energy levels or some kind of opening will be there. And that opening will start cleansing you. Remember, your cleansing will start. And you should be ready for that. Cleansing. That is what is my point. So how to recognize, I mean, uh, you know, I have, a, I mean, uh, very clearly defined those four categories where what will happen with you? What, what are the body anatomy changes in you? 
and what are the different uh, platforms on which you are doing it for example uh, being one you know is basically the suitable meditations is basically you know come out of your present uh, mind situation and you not know, try to divert your mind use that diversion for pulling your mind and go back to the work and then you know how peaceful mind actually you know that is one type of meditation you do chanting you do you know uh, do whatever activity whatever you like and you define that. for example do exercise all those things are really important and um, this is what is the, the the first being which normally does and the second being is specifically on your chakra developments you know where one of your chakra is basically becoming powerful for example in your case your throat chakra is very powerful your communication and all those skills are really you know about this thing so you develop those expertise on to your specific behavior pattern specific personality pattern and then you get a success in material life the being three is clearly opening up your uh, you know enabling your uh, consciousnesses and your consciousnesses rises so there are exactly the openings there are certain meditations methods you know like uh, like yin yang balancing which is required for the third being and those yin yang balancing has to be there and that personality changes or transformation is expected from you before starting this then only you can take up this particular exercise otherwise if you try to open up your uh, uh, exercise with the uh, you know ajna chakra or your eyebrow chakra what will happen is this will try to unfold and this energy will start rising you and this rising of energy is going to affect your consciousness is impurity and those impurities will affect you you that's why i'm saying the purification is required the pre requisite requisite is required for this meditation interesting that is interesting i mean you uh, and, and and while i'm listening to this and i'm sure all of the people who are listening to this the lot of questions that are coming in our mind sir but before i ask and before i move ahead and ask more questions there is one question that is being uh, asked by uh, mr sanjay kale he says is this book soul journey of a human being the book that is what we are you know the concept that we are discussing today is this book for a person who is experienced in meditation or is this also for people who is like a novice like somebody who has no idea what meditation is somebody like me let's say for what it matter so so is this book for people who are experienced into consciousness and chakras and meditation or somebody who is a newbie into these concepts this book is for all means i have stages given but then this book is specifically for the consciousness i mean i have explained what is a consciousness world out there now that consciousness... now that brings me to my next question so by the way just to answer your question mr sanjay uh, you know absolutely this book is for everyone it doesn't matter if you are already experienced into this subject or you want to learn about this subject you have no idea this book is for you because i've read it and i'm not too experienced in this subject but i could still understand and had some fantastic key takeaways uh mrs sunil my next question to you is we have been talking about consciousness we have been talking about chakras in very simple words what the asan shabdon mein if somebody has to understand what is consciousness and this word has been used a lot so what is your uh, what would you like to you know how would you like us to understand this word which is consciousness see you and me all humans we exist in a consciousness our existence is in a consciousness is represented by our physical body this is very you know important word i'm talking about your consciousness lies in the three consciousness bodies you know along with your physical body so there are three consciousness etheric body your uh, emotional body your uh, mental body it is also given in the vedas you know tamas rajas and sattvic bodies actually so these bodies is your personality this personality is formed based on your experiences based on your upbringing based on your past life so this consciousness is are being generated by you this consciousness are evolve with you you just the entire world with your consciousness so i i just with my readiness so there is something which 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 happens in such a way that you try to take a decision based on your own things actually and along with this consciousnesses there are faculties i have given in the detail in the book there are faculties the way your physical body the organs or body anatomy or skeleton the same way 
in the consciousness there are the faculties there is a, there are the meridians there are the chakras there are the there is a source of kundalini alchemies and there are glands actually you know which are basically connected from the you know, chakras so all these faculties are basically representing your personality but your personality exists with the consciousness and along with the consciousness you grow with your shadri pose your uh, state of mind and your mind become a kind of you know creation of all these things so all inputs your mindset attitude and belief system which exist in your uh, all these three bodies so this, this is, is this is this is uh, you know as you have explained about consciousness and what about what about um, kundalini sir you have also talked about kundalini in the book now very simple words we also hear this uh, word uh, uh, i mean a uh, lot of times about kundalini consciousness makes sense to me now when we say kundalini what in simple words do we do we mean by kundalini and also with chakras we have been talking about chakras when we get into meditation it has an impact on chakras and you just said it i have my chakra here the, you know it's uh, it's it's better so what are chakras see that's why right. i mean uh, let's let's uh, take it this way you have a personality configuration okay this personality configuration exists with three consciousness bodies etheric body your uh, emotional body and your mental body all three represent your personality your emotional personality your uh, intelligence personality and your energy level of course so these three consciousness bodies basically having a kind of mindset attitude and belief systems you carry forward and you build it as a movement this is your personality and this personality's attributes are being taken by the 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 chakra so there are seven chakras exist and there is a meridian there are three meridians ida pingla and sushmana sushmana is in dormant stage but ida and pingla which are basically even they those are given in your uh, you know uh, uh, vedas and everywhere they, they, we have a medicine system on that you know your uh, uh, ida and pingla or just find out the ida and pingla and then give a meditation on that, uh, medications on that so this meridian is basically acting as a skeleton for this and these seven chakras exist chakra number 1 is a root chakra then chakra number 2 is a sex chakra chakra number 3 is a navel chakra uh, you know navel chakra and uh, chakra number 4 is a heart chakra 5 is a throat chakra and your 6 uh, is a you know uh, ajna chakra or the eyebrow chakra and the last one is a crown which is basically you know connecting you to the higher being section so these chakras have got their own responsibility to handle for example the lower chakra navel and below that chakra those are responsible for your etheric kind of energy you know uh, existence into this material world and they that's surrounded with all the shadows and you know weaknesses then your heart chakra heart chakra is represent your uh, emotional kind of attributes and your ajna chakra which is represent your intelligence kind of yin yang exist in this your ajna chakra and heart chakra remember this the 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 navel chakra represent energy which requires for both now throat chakra is responsible for the processing which is in and out and all that you know basically is responsible for the communication between the chakra so this chakra brings in the consciousnesses and they, the the ajna chakra or the eyebrow chakra which is responsible for your uh, you know uh, mind and uh, you know all those processing is process and the outcome is again your mindset attitude belief system goes back to your consciousness as a latest version if you transform the latest version is copied there but then the action item is basically sent in the terms of attitude which is the instructions given to your glands there are seven glands exist on this you know chakras are presenting actually so these glands basically are the ductless if you see they do not connected they just sits on your organs but then they are connected to the chakra so chakra gives all kind of instructions of the you know what come of this one via your gland so you are emotional things or whatever your properties present things comes to the chakra and given to the mind for the processing mind takes a decision based on your mindset whatever you have generated and and those things are outcome is basically given to you know your physical body in terms of uh, you know 
from the glands. Sir, so these, the sir, sir, these all concepts are so fascinating and interesting. And I, it's like I'm hooked on to what you're saying. And I just want you to go on and on and on and not stop at all. But before we do that, I have this question, like a layman's perspective. I have a question. Some of my young friends may have this question as well. And the question is, why is this subject important? I mean, I'm busy in my practical life. I'm, I'm, I'm busy in like my nine to five and I'm taking care of my family and earning and all of this. When we talk about chakras and kundalini, when we talk about consciousness, when we talk about meditation, like why are these subjects, why are these topics important? Why do we have to understand and get into it? And just now you use the word your transformational self. I mean, if you follow the transformational self. So my, my question to you is, what is it that people like us missing by not understanding these concepts, not getting deep into these, because this is not being taught in our school. There are no, there are no people that we can easily go up to and seek knowledge on this. But what are we missing by not knowing what we are discussing right now? I mean, can we ask the people, the, I mean, uh, what is their understanding about the pur purpose of uh, this life? Wow. Uh, uh, you're I mean, saying? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, we, we are, we exist here, right? So what is your purpose actually? And, uh, why why we have taken a birth or whatever birth we we are, we are basically existing right now what is the purpose of it great so i'll ask this question to every single one of the audience here um, and uh, thank you very much mr anoop ji if uh, if i if i am correctly recognizing you for uh, appreciating the question friends the question is what is the purpose of our life am, is, is that the question we want to ask the audience mr Sunil? Yes. Friends, tell me what do you, what is your understanding, or are you clear about what's your purpose? What is the purpose of life? Are we all clear on this? That's a so on on my question. He has thrown another question to every single one of us, and I'd like you all to jump onto this this interaction and tell us what is your understanding of your purpose in life? What is your purpose? Do you know? If you don't know, is this question important? I mean, I want to, I want the audience to jump into this conversation right now and tell me in the chat box. I'm having a keen eye on the chat box. Tell me, what is your purpose of life? Do you know what it is? And if you don't know, uh, uh, would you be interested and just tell me what, what you think about this? Put it in the chat box. Uh, and, uh, and I'll be really keen to see some of the comments flowing in, in the chat box. So one of the answers that has come up uh, is Dr. Brett says liberation. So Mr. Sunil, the answer that has come up is liberation. It says being in touch with the true self. That's the purpose of life. It says, uh, you know, being in touch with the true self. And Mr. Sanjay says purpose of life is being happy. And, and that being is, you know, very uh, specifically written in B E being in caps. It says purpose of life is being happy and makes others happy. And Sri Lekha says, realization and being of service to mankind. That's going to be the purpose of life. Vinu says to be able to at least bring happiness to people you meet and serve unconditionally. Bring happiness to people you meet and serve unconditionally. And Ula says to face challenges. Uh, realization again says, says Sri Lekha. These are some of the comments going in, Mr. Sunil. Please go ahead. What's your take? Yeah. See, the, the purpose of your existence or... Uh, you know, incarnation is the transformation. You have personality, whatever is developed. And this personality evolves. And when you evolve, you transform. There are various personalities, you know, transformation is required. And when you transform, you go up and you align yourself with the divine personality, the divine law. At that time, what it is, you move out of this particular, you know, the physical world. We have taken a physical world because we able to take a, the, the physical properties of, uh, you know, Alkemai generation or the Kundini, which is there, which basically enables your, you know, that energy enables your transformation phases and you only transform whatever material life, what you're doing, success and all that, that is basically, uh, you know, uh, which is, which is, which you're going to keep it here. So that's why I have given the, again, the fourth, you know, the fourth uh, stages of the human being, how they transform. So you transform from first to second, second to third, third to fourth. So the purpose of power is basically a transformation. So what is happening is you have personality and you have lessons to learn. 
you are undergoing testing remember that you are undergoing testing and it is expected you to change from that particular state to a, a different transformation stage so that is what is happening with you every time once you are basically transform on those certain attributes you know certain personality attributes your body itself which is which has reconfigured yourself see while you are taking the birth if you see the personality how it grows this personality adjusts into the surrounding also that way as per your configuration and is basically expected to close those particular thing transform and move on to the next level so your body or your mind or your personality itself closes certain doors and opens certain doors. So you have taken a birth only for the transformation. And I have given a very, you know, transformation, purification and testing chapter in this book. You, I mean, it is not only interesting, but then it will, it will be an eye opener for all. So can we in very simple words say that what we are saying, discussing right now is the purpose of life is transformation? Yes. Okay. Take a lesson. And uh, you you are here for the you know purification. How the transformation happens is purification. Okay. And you have come here for the transformation by purification. And and the and the and the concepts that we are talking about, the consciousness and meditation and chakras, it helps you move towards that path of path of purification that eventually helps you get that transformation, which could eventually lead to achieving the purpose of your life. Am I right, sir? Correct. Great. And with transformation, what happened is so those four stages I have given. The moment you move on to one to another one, you will realize your certain things are gone. Certain things are gone and you move on to the next level and then you do start doing something different actually. Super. So, Super. Friends, how many of you feel that the discussion that we are having right now, what the, the, the interaction, the intense discussion that is happening right now, is not only interesting but fascinating and intriguing at the same time i mean we want to know more about it put it in the chat box and type yes if you also agree because right now i'm i'm really fascinated and i'm intrigued and, and my list of questions is increasing as i'm covering the question that are already there please type in the chat box yes if you also feel the same way that the discussion is getting interesting and intense and intriguing at the same time type type yes in the chat box and while you're doing this, what I want to tell every single one of you is that today, right now, when we are live right now, you have the opportunity to grab the copy of the book that we are discussing right now. What we are discussing right now is what most of the concepts that are discussed by Mr. Sunil in the book. So you have an opportunity to grab the book and uh, I'll just put it in the chat in the, you know, I'll just start the offer. You can click click on the button uh, that has that is on your screen right now. If you click on the offer button that has just come up, it will take you to Amazon where you can buy the book right now when we are discussing it. And the people who choose to buy this book right now, please do put your name in the chat box. We would like to personally thank you for joining us in this celebration. Right. So thank you very much for typing those yeses, Mr. Sunil. Just like me, I'm not the only one right now. Every single one of the participant and the attendee uh, is, is as fascinated and intrigued as I am right now. So I want to once again thank you. And with this thank you note, I have a question for you, sir. Then what is the role of karma and dharma in our life? Please, please throw some light on this. See, you are... <coughs> Sorry. Our existence, you know, our personality is governed by the divine uh, you know, principles. Remember that. You try to do anything against that, you will have problems. Our personality goes through, we, we are a little bit you know, away from these divine principles. You know, that is divine law or you can say dharma. In the Hinduism, it is called as a dharma. Let's call it as a divine law or divine principles. So at a given time, actually, when, when you evolve, you walk your own path, you walk your experiences, with, with your experiences, you build your personality. That personality uses a lot of things. For example, it, it develops with the, the consciousness components like Ida and Pingala development, your chakra development, your Kundalini development, your left brain, right brain development. And your consciousness is yin yang consciousness. Is, though you have three bodies, but I'm talking about the two which are basically affecting you. So this this 
yin yang is in terms of representing in terms of your your emotional intelligence so what happened is i developed my personality some in some people emotional body gets developed you you move on to that direction and then you you know move on to the you know developing your left brain or right brain so it is a dichotomy there is nothing wrong but what happened is you are not completely exercising the entire things but when you follow all these you know principles actually you move towards you know evolvement all those things i mean i have given the example of mahabharata actually where the there are more than 100 200 characters where basically and each and every one has got his own definition about the dharma the divine principles so i am fighting from friendships i am fighting for uh, you know some favor i am fighting for my commitment True. but these are all different different type of dharmas but then by following one dharma you are creating issues on another dharma principle i am following the emotional path i am very good in emotional but i have not developed myself into the intelligence kind of thing i am i am basically because of my path i am totally inward i am basically i don't know what is mixing up the people i am afraid of talking to the people you know you know strange people that's not wrong as such but you basically violates other things actually you know or you are not develop on those things so you follow this principle i have given a definitions of the <coughs> of the you know as per my uh, meditation practice the definitions of the uh, no uh, given in terms of uh, what is the dharma and karma you know the what is the cosmic law so i have given <coughs> specifically uh, like this constructed based on equality follow equality you will get a success follow impartiality you will get a success follow humanity get a success love fairness honesty integrity truth compassion commitment all these things are important and those are basically very clearly you know governed by the uh, this uh, this divine law or dharma once you follow you will not have any issues truth also you know because what happened is the moment you go away from all this principal things you you create a kind of karma which is the action so what happened is karma is inbuilt into your personality that's what the another goal statement which i made because let's say this is a principal divine principal i'm talking about you are here so <clears throat> whatever actions you are doing is based on your present uh, you know configuration of your consciousness and you generate that uh, karma according so you generate good karma you generate bad karma okay so this is what is the each and every actions so each and every breath is giving the opportunity for you and generating the opportunity for you for the good karma remember that <clears throat> so this is how is the karma generation and uh, you know the the dharma ja basically where you should follow sir this is interesting but that brings me to another question there's another thing that is coming in my mind right now which is you give reference to mahabharata you give reference to the characters and right now we just said that you know we um, you know we do karmas and there are a lot of uh, uh, you know whatever actions that we take my the question that is coming to my mind is how do i know as a layman right now that whatever actions or decisions that, that i'm taking in my everyday life am i on the right path or not am i am i taking the right decisions am i moving in the right direction are the are the are my karmas in in the right direction so how do i know as a layman if my decisions my day to day decisions am i going in the right direction or not is there any way that i can come to know about this do you want to do you want to throw some light on this sir see what happened is <clears throat> i mean there are ways actually we'll discuss about that uh, later part of it actually the first thing is your personality or you your soul has taken a birth in this he has configured the stage for you right the stage what is accepted by you so you have to really follow that particular things you know where exactly i i i am actually and then try to you know improve on that where exactly you are lagging for example you are working in some organizations and you are emotionally driven but then you are you are having the issues in the intelligence you have to really think from that perspective if you are uh, you know 
left brain, then you have to develop your right brain. If you are inward, then you have to really work on the outward. So all those things, you know, which is really important for you to really focus. And you are any given of time, you are perfectly in that particular place. So look around, like relationships. You are having the relationship issues. Try to solve out what are the issues. If you are having the uh, the personality issues, consciousness issues, or state of mind of issues, those are basically given to you for your testing and transformation. So you have to come out of all those things. Actually. So I have basically, you know, uh, in my website also, I have basically developed a kind of uh, personality test. This personality test is one hour, and it will give you a, a kind of uh, whether you are emotional based decision maker or you are mental based decision maker. It makes a lot of difference, you know, or you are uh, inward, outward, you are, uh, you know, uh, left brain or right brain, because both brains are different. To be frank with you, the left brain, which purely works on past to present data, is very interesting. Right? Left brain works on a framework. He will not accept out of the box. The right brain works on present to future. So it's really important. You have to switch between or you have to really, you know, work towards both the brains. So some people what happened is because of your travel on this particular path your experience is bad or good or whatever you know success failures what happened is you generated your mindset and you have to really understand where i am in this one i mean inward then you have to really work on the outward you have to understand out for example the person who is having the let's say uh, issues on the emotional and he is basically intelligence he has to understand the emotional because both the bodies you know your consciousnesses are different they do not understand each other only mind understand that and mind interface based on the properties or you know mindset you are so you have to develop those things so that that test will give you that you are where exactly in this one great you can have a you know test anonymous survey also Maybe you can give a kind of uh, different uh, this thing and go through it properly and search the things properly. Okay, so how how so what is the name of the website, sir? In case people are interested. My in my, my my company, I have I've come out with the company sumiralife.com. So on this one, I am basically coming out with uh, a such kind of test. That is the basic test. Okay, and it will be a one hour uh, question and answers and uh, communication will be given by a kind of email or I can give a kind of you know consultation on that face to face but i have also come out with a kind of meditation programs where exactly you can focus for example you are lagging on your intelligence then how to do a meditation on the intelligence if you are burnout you know, having the issues in terms of personality your changes transformation how to do that so how to develop those and even all all beings being one, being two, being three, being four, I have given the a different kind of meditations. It will be open for some, um, you know, those those programs will be open by certain dates actually. Maybe you can you can check up the dates. So it will be a video audio kind of program. It is really important. For example, I'm I I see in my uh, you know personality test that I'm a little bit weak on the emotional side. Okay. But then you'll find in some of the personality cases, they don't have emotional stage develop at all. Those chakras are, you know, blocked. Those are not blocked, but they are not developed. They cannot, you know, pull the energy and, you know, pull the, you know, uh, fight with the intelligence. So what happened is you need to really focus that I have not developed on this side because of your profession. Let's say uh, analyst or, uh, you know, some kind of lawyer, I mean, lawyers, scientists, they develop a lot of their left brain. So, over a period of time, your mindset is developed in such a way that you use a left brain for everything. That is exactly the problem. So, you have to start using the right brain. And how to do that? For example, if you are very intellectual, but then you do not understand, your ego also exists. There is also a very good chapter on the ego. Ego also exists. Ego doesn't tell you I have ego. You know? so, so the thing is how to recognize, you recognize, first of all, there are three steps are there. Identify, you know, identify what exactly is the issue with you. And then accept. You accept that, okay, this is because of me. And then you define the strategy. For example, 
this energy you know which is really 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 activated during the young age for example this energy start your second each chakra takes seven, seven seven years so 14 years is a second chakra which is a sex chakra so this energy is basically alchemy this is the primary alchemy okay which is which starts from your bonad and there is kundalini is a divine which which happens only after uh, you know very heavy purifications kundalini never comes out in it's in a dormant state so this alchemy effects to this young people your marriage and and this i have given a very you know some short uh, you know chapter about this energy this energy is literally available to you during your young age and you don't know how to you know do that so you whatever is there you try to focus you try to do this so really important understand this and you know meditations or some kind of practices even so what, what is the right age to to learn these concepts and to get into this what do you suggest is the right is, is the right age? Because a lot of us who are listening to this right now may have young kids at home. So when they should be introduced to these concepts, because these are not being taught in school. So what what what? How would you answer that? See, to be frank with you, this uh, chakra development is required. So right age for you know when all chakras are developed means I'm not saying they are, they have gained the expertise. They, they basically uh, started uh, you know handling the some sort of energy in that. So, seven, seven chakras is ideally all your six chakras. Seven chakra is not basically connected to Ida and Pingda. It's just connected to Sushma. So, this 42 age, you know, 42 age is a maturity period of chakra. So, you should start doing a kind of, such kind of spiritual activities. If you are focusing on this, from the age of 30 to 35, why I'm telling you? Because your energy levels or your uh, that uh, source, you know, which is there, and after six, 60 years, 70 years, those source energy will not be there actually, you know, which, which will, which will is its own path of extinguishing. So that is the right age where you start opening up your energy centers. You start doing the meditation programs and uh, you know doing all this. Stuff. But what is important is I have given those paths, you know. Those paths are really important. For example, different different paths I were given, you know, Raj Yoga, then Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga. So there are certain paths you can you can really you know start doing all those in your child age also. You know. For example, doing a good karma. So your parents should start giving them a kind of lessons. Do the good karma. Do this exercise. Your physical exercise is very important because the cleansing of your physical body, building up your physical body. Those things you have to start at the beginning only. I mean, you know, I mean, at a young age you should start doing the exercise. So the spiritual spirituality, I I suggest 30 to 35 years is where you should start. In in our Hinduism also, one prastha we are talking about. We leave all family life and we go to the you know some kind of uh, uh, place, you know, ashram or somewhere where we clearly focus on our spiritual life. So you are asking for that, but then I'm giving you the answers to everything. Makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. Friends, what we are discussing right now uh, are, are just some of the excerpts, some of the insights from the book that is there in my hand right now. We are celebrating the launch of this book. The link is right there in the chat box. I would really urge every single one of you who is interested in this subject and you are. That's why you're here being a part of this discussion right now. Click on the link, grab the book on Amazon and bring this energy this energy of the knowledge that's there in the book in your house read it you yourself your spouse your children and everybody we highly recommend reading this book i've read it and i highly recommend this book mr sunil my next question to you we were just talking about you know chakras the blockage of chakras or maybe the chakras not getting developed as such how do i know if my chakras are blocked see all these seven chakras they represent your nearby organ for this and your consciousness is chakra draws your you know pulls your consciousness in, and that's how the chakra evolves actually. so what happened is if this chakra blockage is not the right term basically chakra is undeveloped chakra is not uh, you know that opening of chakra is not enough to take the energy 
because sometimes you know have sudden energy you know pouring in because of lot of incidences lot of things happen in you burn out and all that. so at that time chakra supposed to happen so how do i know chakra is one is your physical representations of the nearby organ the second one is as i rightly you know i mean i said the 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 test which i'm talking about the, the personality test by which you can find out your which chakra is basically you know weak or uh, undeveloped or uh, which requires attention so for example your personality also you know combination of the chakra i have given the combination some of the uh, combinations also for hmm. example the creative one hmm. the creative personality exists with a you know your second chakra that is a sex chakra your heart chakra and your throat chakra hmm. these are the three responsible chakra grows hmm. when you are a creative person so you need to know first of all how to handle this particular chakra actually if you are a scientist and and, and also creativity is on the right brain so because creativity requires out of the box you know present True. the future so True. that's how the uh, you know the that personality basically develops and it basically undevelop on other side because of all this path or whatever is uh, you know the second one let's say scientist or you know analyst or uh, you know they 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 have you you may be having a heart chakra obviously but then you will be using the left brain over a period of time if the lawyer can come from constantly using the left brain or even the analyst analysis constantly using the left brain your right brain is basically what happen is you develop your mindset also in that fashion so mindset means i mean i will give a simple example the half filled glass if you fill in front of you and you ask the questions the one person will say it is half filled with the water the another person will say half filled with the air somebody said hey, this this glass is so this is how the mindset is basically you are developing you are mm -hmm. basically focusing only on those things which is which is in your you know processing mind mm -hmm. so there exactly is the answer so focus on those by the uh, by the physical appearance uh, book, uh, in my book i have given each chakra you know uh, which are the things which are possible mm. if it is blocked or if it is mm. all seven chakras i have given mm. but by personality test you can find out in a more detail you can have consultation with me you can write to me or the personality test itself will give a detail kind of these are the weak these are the strong area and then my my meditation programs are there those meditations are not a simple kind of program these are all basically techniques how to because you have to understand how mind works and i'm coming out with the next book also on the mind and the consciousness i um, mean you know how mind works and how energy basically is uh, you know can be controlled so we will we will talk about your second book as well but you just made reference to getting in touch with you my question to you is do you help people like do you hand hold people do you coach people personally on all of the stuff that you talked about in the book and that you've experienced in your life so do you do that if yes how can people get in touch with you yes i mean i'm acting as a life coach and a healer also so you can get in touch with me by my website my uh, phone numbers available my um, detail programs are available my facebook is also available so all channels are opened up now so you know all those things are available to you i mean people have start i mean i have been doing all these things and so far i mean the healing programs are given uh, you know all those things are given to uh, who's ever basically approached to me and now they are available to the entire people with my identity i have given in the form of book you know so the ball started rolling Interesting, right? So, uh, Mr. Sunil, Sora, one of our participants, has an interesting question. He looked at the title of the book, and he said, "Why B E is in caps? What is the significance of this?" So, so our audience is also interested in knowing the uniqueness of this word "being" in the title of the book. Please tell us. See, B means your existence, and your existence is and and when we use like B. i want to be something so you transform it so the whole thing is being given in terms of uh, you know all the consciousness is the the existence as well as your transformation so all that information is covered into this particular uh, book that's why to emphasize on that b i have specifically written b in capital and if you see 
this group, there are three names which are basically possible. You see, the, the soul being is also possible in this one. Then uh, journey of human is also possible. And soul journey of human being is also possible. So all those three things I have given you. Absolutely. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Saurabh and friends. If you have any questions, every single one of you who is listening to us right now, if there is, if there are any questions out of what we have discussed so far, if there is anything that you want to know the author about the book, about the learnings, about the experiences, about the wisdom, please do not hesitate and put your questions in the chat box. I'll become your voice and I'll ask the question to the man himself. Mr. Sunil, I am really keen to know about uh, healing. You just said that you are a healer as well. Is it possible that somebody can heal himself? And to what extent can somebody heal himself? See, first of all, healing is basically possible. It, we, we are talking about the consciousness, physical things. Basically, you know how to you know there, there is a separate science of it. But I'm talking about the healing which exists into this consciousness domain, which are etheric energy, your uh, uh, emotional energy and your mental energy. So I have covered a separate chapter on that and how your chakra is basically responsible to heal yourself. Because that healing basically possible by yourself adopting certain kind of you know, transformation and you know, coming out of the situation. If your weaknesses are there, coming out of those. Relationship issues are there, coming out of those. If you are burning out, coming out of those. Those are all self healing techniques are anyway you know, available. But right now, I'm specifically talking about the healing, which is the healer. So healer is basically what happened is because of his you know, awakening and the energy rising. You know, again, there is a standing. Standing means you know, using that energy and the amount of energy. So this energy he can basically you know, use for the purpose of the healing. That is the self energy. The second one is because of his uh, you know, um, advancement. He connect to the external world and there the universe is ready to help you in every aspect. So that universal energy is basically transferred via your mechanism to the this physical world. Because this, this universal energy is exists in a consciousness form, and this consciousness form building is only possible by the human being in an advanced stage. So human being who is in an advanced position is the person who can understand the consciousnesses and interface the consciousnesses. So your normal consciousnesses, people, I mean, the human beings are there and there is something which is, you know, advanced humans, you know, they, they by the meditations and all that. And there is something which is the external world universe, which is giving a lot of kind of, you know, the universal health, everything is available. So this in between people, they develop a kind of mechanism to interface with the, you know, the external world. Via your penal, uh, you know, penal gland, and uh, they connect by your crown chakra. So this energy is basically coming to you and redirect it into the, you know, uh, the person. The person can enable his authorities also. For example, he might be having some gift from the, you know, uh, because of his, his incarnation. Everyone has a gift. You have to enable that. So he enables that particular abilities, and then he uses all those things and the people so what happened is the moment i connect with my consciousnesses to you know energy with him there are three possibilities exist excess of energy lesser of energy and your karma hmm. the healer can help the person in terms of his excess energy and hmm. lesser energy you know hmm. but the karma which requires your transformation. For example, if you are having the heart trouble or you are having issues with your knees and I heal it, the things will be okay for some time. But then you go back, go back to the in front of boss or your spouse and then start fighting. You will develop the things again. So you have to transform on those things. Remember the transformation is required for those things. For example, if you are having the knees problem and you're overweight, it is expected from you to really do the exercise and bring down your, uh, you know, uh, this thing. So that type of transformation is expected from you. Hmm. So healer won't be able to transform you. Hmm. He will help you to transform. He will guide you. you. He will help you in reducing your excess of energy, lesser of energy. Hmm. But he cannot do, you know, your transformation. You have to do it. And free will is given because 
you can transform positive side you can transform negative side True. the moment each and every thinking of you is opening the opportunity to transform positive side negative side and True. universal configures accordingly you, you take any action karma configures so karma is configured with you first and your surrounding so so those are all things <laughs> <laughs> very interesting sir sir one of the participant nihal has a question for you the question is a piece of, what what is your piece of advice for people who are in their 20s you said that some of the ideas that we are discussing are relevant for people who are in their 30s and that is where this you know this getting into chakras and and healing it is is something that makes sense for them but somebody who is into their 20s so based on your experience what is the advice that you want to give to young audience who is listening to us right now see i mean uh, during the this particular 20 age your sex chakra is basically opening up and the energy flows to it and this is something new to you so what happened is i have given a complete chapter that how this because this this particular energy is not only used for the you know the sexual purpose i'm little bit straight on this this is used for your mind also for example it affects affects your mind it affects your uh, you know multi it is multiply your uh, issues multiply your good things multiply your bad things so what happens is during that time you 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 are basically trying to you know learn you know your your this path and at that time this particular things fuels your weaknesses very fast so that's why this young age we call it as a you know young blood which is basically doesn't understand this energy they go here they go there and you know use this energy for the bad purpose bad voices you know so what is important is you understand this energy and i have given a very specific chapter how to control this particular energy there are if you see our uh, you know certain you know religious way also i mean the syllabus is used for the you know the advancement because that particular energy you don't waste it you use it for the good purpose during that time you observe the good thinking good thinking follow someone good so these are all things if you use with this particular energy you will basically come out and then you will balance yourself people are during that age they they don't know how to balance so you focus on that that this particular energy is causing me a problem or this energy has to be handled in a proper way i have given the specific topics on that i think that is uh, a, you have really wonderfully uh, answered that question and it makes so much sense and i'm sure nihal as you're listening to this this must have made sense to you as well um mr sunil we have we have almost uh, invested uh, uh, you know amazing uh, 60 minutes one hour into this discussion it has been really an amazing experience for me i learned a lot of things and i'm going to now read the book with a with a mindset of the learnings that i had from you in this discussion so far so far so sir you were talking about your second book i'm really keen to know i'm sure a lot of people would be interested as well uh, and especially a lot of people who have purchased the book would be interested to know about your second book so what's the plan for the second book what's the topic when are we expecting it see i have set up a ground on the consciousness means what all the things required and uh, how it functions now if you see your personality your upbringing your shadow repos your weaknesses everything is basically your mind has become mind you have created your personality has created it works on its own mindset attitude and belief systems right so now on this mind how it works and how to basically come out of certain situations and the mind related things you know how mind operates in a detail and another thing is a consciousness energy how to handle it means those those may be a kind of little bit advanced maybe i'll release or uh, but then this particular stages i want to release on this two front where understand your mind thinking and mind processes very clearly and then you take a call and how to control it because some people are uncontrollable they don't know what is happening so you understand those faculties which i have given you know how they work and if they are undeveloped for example you know i am having the issues i am a scientist i am very good in the you know all kind of laws and all that but emotionally i am not basically good 
I'm creating a problems in man. So you are basically dragging yourself into different kind of karmas because those relationship karmas, all those you know matrix will be there for your next birth to clear, not transform. Mm. So you have to understand how mind works, and then you control that mind. You control your shadri pose. You con- you you come out of your mind, you know, the state of mind issues like anger, ego. You know how to manage those. Your, you know, fear. Those, those exist onto those particular, uh, you know, uh, faculties or the consciousness bodies which I am talking about. Those exist over there. So you understand those things, and then meditation practices for those, which are basically going to line up with that. Right, practice. right. So, Neil, I want to ask a difficult question to you now. The difficult question that I want to ask is: Out of all these amazing chapters that you have written in the book, which one is your favorite? Uh, it's, it's basically, if you'll see, all this thing is uh, basically leading to your transformation. So, purification and transformation and your testing. If you'll understand that, you will win over the life, I'm telling you. You understand that testing is happening every second with you. People are not knowing what is testing. It's a repeated pattern of issues. Repeated pattern of issues. Understand why they are coming to you. You know, and transformation, purification, and testing. Three things you understand perfectly, and you will solve all of your problems. You will come to know I am getting this this problem. Oh, last year also I faced. It. Hmm. Yesterday also I faced. Hmm. So it is an issue which is universe is telling me to change. Universe is telling me to transform on that. Unless until I don't transform, I don't. So this is what is my uh, you know the important. Uh, chapter which is my favorite i completely agree with you i mean i completely agree with you right so transformation purification and testing this is so critical for every single one of us to gain insight on this and as you said why are these situations again and again coming to me and to my life why am i facing these challenges you get answers to these questions so neil how was the experience of writing this book and how long have you been thinking of writing a book and uh, how was this experience? How do you feel now after becoming a published author? I'm writing a book for the last 25 years, to be frank with you. <laughs> to be ready with this kind of, uh, you know, yes, understanding. It is yes. It, as such, book book uh, book is written in a, a kind of uh, one year. Yeah. And uh, but then all those preparation basically true is my. Own, um, you know, practices, meditation practices, and clarity. What I give. So whatever I have is basically based on my this meditation practices and my self uh, understanding, as well as obviously, I mean, I thanks to my, you know, uh, all the uh, spiritual guides, spiritual masters, and uh, of course my father, mother, and specifically thanks to my wife, and obviously, you know, because. That's the other part of your personality, and you have to align with that. So a lot of teaching happens, and I, I, this this whole thing happened within a period of time, and I am now I'm thinking that all those twenty five years has given me some of the other things, you know. So, so I'm sure this saying, lockdown period would have helped you as well. This lockdown that has happened, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it gave you a lot of time to go deep into this, yeah, and work on the book. Certainly. Uh, uh, Mrs. Sunil, Mr. Vinu has a question for us. The question is, the journey of knowing oneself in depth, it also has some testings in itself. Right? So journey of knowing, um, I just missed the question there. It says the journey of knowing oneself in depth has also some testings too. So please tell us something about it. Yeah, I mean, the knowing of self, that's why I've said, I mean, you know, all those beings from one, two, three, four. So testing happens even with everyone. It will, it will happen with the God also. It will happen with all human, you know, higher beings also. So testing doesn't stop. I mean, if someone has realized and all that, he gained the power, he loses the powers. So you, you, your testing is happens every time with you. To be frank with you, I'm, you know, dharma and karma. I'm, I'm talking about the dharma raj of uh, Mahabharata. Mahabharata, yeah. 
when he was entering into the you know uh, heaven when dog was following with him the testing happened over there also so you read read the uh, no mahabharata lot of messages are given the, te- the testing happens with everyone test you 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 come out with the kind of uh, for example the person i'm telling you the anger the person who is having the anger at the fourth being and the anger at the first being is totally different when you you see the deities also they they are angry so at that time what they do that anger has got a enormous power so it is the whole consciousness or the you know the testing which is done because you should not use that anger for wrong purpose so the moment you use like ravana thing will happen for the wrong purpose so testing happens at any given of time you have to be careful that is that is what is my and that, is, and, and that is where the importance of purification and transformation that you talked about and staying staying with the purification staying with that staying with that it's not something that you achieve and then you stop it's a process you have to continue with it i hope that answers your question uh, uh, i hope that answers your question mr vinu dr brett says excellent congratulations says anita everybody is pretty happy with it guys everybody who is listening to us right now i genuinely hope that i was able to do justice with the kind of questions that should have been asked in this program to a man like mr sunil shetty i genuinely hope that i did justice and i hope that i also covered almost every question that the audience has put, put across today uh, mr sunil is there anything else that you think i should be asking on behalf of the audience and this subject i'm not an expert on this but i'm really uh, i really want to ask you is there something that i'm missing that you think we should also be discussing when we are discussing these ideas so that this benefits the audience who is listening to us right now no i think we have covered everything i mean uh, all questions and uh, everything uh, what your chapters are there we covered actually great and if i really want to like talk about uh, um, clarity they can always write to me can approach it by email or uh, you know you can give me a call i mean there's no issue on that So Sunil uh, would you mind sharing your contact details maybe your email id if you are comfortable maybe your phone number if you are comfortable maybe your website exact address if you are comfortable and we'll put that in the chat box and people can get in touch with you yeah my my website is subinalife.com if you could spell that for me sunil and i'll uh, just put it in the chat box s u m i r a l i f e sumira life dot com sumira life uh, sorry ah uh, yeah sumira life dot com okay and how can people get in touch with you through your email id i mean this website is newly launched and uh, there is a separate column is so basically the consultation and you can approach to me via email email is also given my uh, phone number is also given. and you can directly communicate to me via email also and of course if anything is required you can uh, call me i mean i'm available great great so people can get, get in touch with you sure so so friends if you are interested to get in touch with the with the author himself you can go to social media you can search for his name not a difficult name to remember though uh, sunil shetty and uh, and you can reach out to him through his website social media email mobile number all the details that you can uh, you can find from your from the social media as well as from his website now once again uh thank you very much mr sunil it was a great great discussion that i had i highly recommend every single one of you to to grab a copy of the book and i'll just put the link in the chat box once again it was an amazing interaction that i had if you want to learn more on this subject if this discussion uh you know kind of opened your mind to an entire world out there which is waiting for you for your transformation you can click on the link in the chat box go to amazon buy the book the book is available in both physical as well as ebook format and i can absolutely guarantee that this would be one of the best investment in terms of money and time that you will invest in this book highly recommend it go for it no questions whatsoever and thank you amita shetty ji for putting the email id there as well in the chat box so people who are interested in uh, in uh, noting down the email id it's sunil underscore shetty at the rate yahoo.com that's the email id there no, you can no yahoo.in yahoo.in i'm sorry i'm sorry sunil_shetty at yahoo.in is the email id great
So Neil, any last words for our audience here, people who are interested in the book, people who are interested in the subject, any last word that you want to say, anything that you want to uh, tell them uh, before we uh, you know, end this conversation today? I mean, I, I, I mean, my whole journey basically, you know, lot many soul helped me actually. I thanks to all of them and obviously thanks to all of you and joining this particular, uh, you know, uh, webinar. And uh, I, I mean, I thanks all of you. Great. And this is my landmark of, uh, uh, you know, landmark uh, wish that I wanted to come out with such kind of things to the humanity. And I feel that uh, you know by giving such a kind of response i really thank you to all of you friends please type into the chat box how was the session we have almost covered uh, you know uh, over 1 hour 15 minutes in the program we are about to end this session now we are about to close and end the discussion i want to know from every single one of you how has it been today how has it been this time that we spent together how was the learnings and the knowledge and the wisdom that you gained today and how was the answers that you got to your questions today how has been the session Please type good, awesome, fantastic, super, whatever it is that you want to type so that we know that it was a time well spent. Put it in the chat box uh, because I want to know from you, were there any key takeaways for you from this session? And uh, did you learn something new when you when you came into this session, you had a different mindset. And now when you'll, go, will you be, when you'll be going out of this session, you'll have a different mindset altogether. Were we able to open your mind to some possibilities that, that you were like unaware of, things that you should be interested in, things that you should be learning, things that you should be investing your time in. And uh, you must, must learn from masters like Mr. Sunil Shetty. Put it in the chat box and tell me. So Dr. Breath says wonderful and enlightening session. So Mr. Sunil, I'll just cover up some of the comments that are there in the chat box. Vinu says, thank you, thank you, thank you, love you. Thank you and once again, love you. And Sandeep, Sandeep Birde says, nice session. Saurabh says, awesome. We'll be reading the book now. Selesh says, very nice. Nihal says, excellent. Thank you for the wonderful session, says Jyoti. Ula says, nice session. Amita says, thank you, Mr. Sony. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Amita. Thank you to all. Good one, says Santosh. Um, Sanjay Kale says, thank you for this wonderful event. Very well organized and uh, everybody else quite interactive thank you so very much says santosh once again uday says wonderful um, and sanjay kali says very nicely conducted even thank you very much mr sunil are you glad with the response yes obviously look i mean that. look at that i mean this was I amazing mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, these people are specifically on this uh, you know uh, they, they are giving such kind of things you know uh, comments and all that it helps you know building up yourself also actually and uh, obviously, I mean, uh, you will be putting this particular uh, entire uh, session onto, you know, on the YouTube and yes, all that. So certainly. Available to the people who certainly. are not. Certainly. So, so every single one of you, in case you missed some part of this event, in case you joined us late, there is no worry at all. We'll be putting the recorded session of this interaction on YouTube on our channel, Superpower Author. Please go to YouTube, subscribe and uh, watch this video and share with as many people as possible because it's really important that we get into this ancient uh, wisdom, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and, and use it for the betterment of our lives, for the transformation for the transformation that we have been talking about. Ah, thank you so very much, Mr. Sunil Shetty. What an interesting and what a fascinating, transformating session, I would say. I'm going to spend the rest of my night with this book, learning a lot of the ideas that you have shared. I once again want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for giving us this amazing book and, thanks, and thanks. presenting us and sharing this knowledge with us. Thank you once again. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And thank thanks you, all. everyone. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining us today. Um, stay connected, buy the book, read it. If you have any questions, get in touch with the author or us. Well, I'm looking forward to another such session with the author himself. Thank you very much, everyone. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks a lot.